Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. This is Life Today TV. I have Dr. Larry Poland, who is the chairman and CEO of Master Media. Uh, you may not have heard of him, but you have heard of the people that he ministers to, I promise, because he ministers out in Hollywood to a lot of executives and uh, people involved in the film industry. And he's working for, uh, for, he's worked for many, many years to really have an impact, build relationships, and to bridge what he refers to as that chasm. The chasm. The chasm between the big the church deep chasm. <laughs> between Hollywood and faith. Thank you for being here, Dr. Poland. Delight to be uh, here. It's, it's good to have you. Uh, what, is the, what is the chasm that you see? I mean, I, if you ask a person in the church what the chasm is, it's, well, we're the people of God and there are a bunch of immoral perverts out there in Hollywood, right? What do you see the chasm as? Well, I had a guy send me a letter just in the last 30 days. And uh, we mobilize prayer for people in the entertainment industry because we believe prayer changes things because people pray and God responds to that prayer. And, you know, once God starts moving, everything changes. So um, we, he had picked up something that we do on uh, mobilizing prayer for these people. And he sent this letter and he actually said, I don't think there's, you know, well, why are you trying to get us to pray for those people? I consider them the enemy and why would I pray for my enemies? So my staff knows I love to answer, you know, direct <laughs> confrontations like that. So they passed it on to me. My secretary said, I think you're going to like this one. I'm going <laughs> to do. So I said, well, there's, very, there's one very simple reason why we mobilize prayer for people who are enemies. Because that's the ethos, that's the, that's the principle in which God works. In that while we were yet sinners, enemies, Christ died for us. Yeah. And my friend, if... Somebody hadn't prayed for you when you were out there. You wouldn't be in the position of a relationship with God you have today. Mm -hmm. And so we mobilize prayer for friends, enemies, everyone, because it's a command to do it, but also because that's what God responds to in changing people's lives and attitudes, and that's worth doing. Mm -hmm. What year did you move out to Hollywood to do this? Well, I didn't move out to Hollywood to do this. I moved out in 1973 to work with the Campus Crusade for Christ ministry. And it was actually under the uh, oversight of Dr. Bill Bright, the head of that organization, that he challenged me one day. He said, uh, have you ever considered ministering to Hollywood? I go, what? And, and I said, no. And he said, well, would you? And I said, no. <laughs> said, Why not? I said, because I, at that point, had spent about eight years traveling the world, trying to take the good news of forgiveness through Jesus Christ to two-thirds of the world's people who are going to die without even knowing or having an opportunity to place their faith in him. I said, why would I want to minister to Americans? They're going to have a chance to hear. Well, yeah, you know, but Hollywood is still in the innocence of our kids and the purity of the church. And I said, well, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but, but you're kind of asking, do I have any interest, awareness? I don't know anything about Hollywood. I grew up in a very Christian little town in northern Indiana. Mm. Well, would you pray about it? He said, well, sure, I'll pray about it. Right. Pray about anything, right. he said. Right. But he said, you're half, half serious. Uh, I'm, uh, let me do some research to try to figure out what makes the industry tick from moral, spiritual, religious dimension. Mm -hmm. So I did six months of research getting by secretaries. And I'm, Dr. Polby is, is uh, doing research on the role of faith in media, the extent to which personal faith affects the lives and decisions of the movers and shakers in film and television. <laughs> Dr. Polby will be in Hollywood next Tuesday and Wednesday. We'd like to get your boss's opinions on this topic, which is better Tuesday or Wednesday. And so during that six months, I was reading all the books I could get on the rotten underbelly of Hollywood, uh -huh. the investigative journalism, hit and run, indecent exposure, how John Peters and Peter Goober took Sony for a ride, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end of that six months, I said, you know, I love these people. They're bright, creative, fun people. They're kind of my kind of people. Mm -hmm. And the only problem that the people in the industry have is they're just where we all start out, and we all start out without a spiritual relationship with God. Mm -hmm. That's called lost, and I define lost as living by a set of guidelines that systematically dismantle your life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those dear people have their lives dismantled because as yeah. E. Stanley Jones said, no one ever really breaks God's laws. You challenge God's laws, they break you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And how do you, what's the secret? What's, what, what's in the secret sauce here that, that you've had some success of actually having an impact? Well, um, unfortunately, the church has taken three failed strategies toward the Hollywood problem. Mm -hmm. I've seen a couple hundred research, you know, research um, data over the you know, 30 years on Hollywood. And Christian, non-Christian, the populace in general 
do not feel that Hollywood is a positive contributor to America. Yeah. I, I've never seen yeah. negative numbers lower than 73%. I've seen negative numbers as high as 93%. You know, whether it's, well, it's, uh, it's, it's eroding the family or it's destroying patriotism or whatever it is, uh, Hollywood doesn't have a good rap generally. Um, so uh, the church picking this up in the start of the film business, the early part of the 1900s, we developed a strategy I call the separate but equal strategy. Um, or more likely, I guess, at the, at the starting point, the uh, isolate and condemn strategy. For, for a go, go, you know, growing up in a conservative church, it was a sin to go to a movie house, mm. even if I went to see the greatest story ever told, which was Jesus. And so until about 1950, we had this isolate and condemn, and then we launched this, hey, wait a minute, we could have Christian film, Christian television, Christian con con contemporary music, Christian mm. broadcasting. So we started our whole industry on our own. And, you know, praise God for that. We have all benefited from that. But it didn't do anything about the Hollywood problem. Right. And, and it kind of gave us our separate but equal world in which to be involved in media. And then in the 70s, things became more hostile to our faith, to our values, to our family principles and so forth. And so we got really ticked. <laughs> so we developed a whole strategy of what I call anger strategies. Boycott those suckers, you know. Mm. Uh, protest them and... and uh, you know, send them hate mail, whatever else. Well, in one of the chapters in the book is called um, The Emissaries of Peace Take Up Arms. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and it's a, it's a parable about some folks who discover some tribes people in the jungles or eating people and want to stop them. And they try the strategies we've used in Hollywood, boycotts and protests. And of course, it didn't work. They just sharpened their spears. You got to read that chapter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like good uh, stuff. So what have you done differently? Well, um... The industry is driven by people who um, are chasing, typically, there are wild exceptions. There are a lot of wonderful, centered, ethical people in the entertainment industry, and this is unfair you know, to, uh, to generalize. Right. But the industry is driven by people who have a set of values, and that's the heart of the book. The chasm is the value difference between the people that the entertainment industry refers to as the flyovers. Those are the people they fly over between L.A. and New York. Right. They call those, oh, those are the people from the I states, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, or whatever, I guess. Um, the values are so wildly disparate that there's, they're just from different galaxies. And as a result, the people in Hollywood tend to hate those people from the I states, those conservative, those even Republicans. Sure. Only like 6% of the entertainment industry would admit to being conservative uh, and maybe 12% a Republican. But even there, they, they, they say that with some fear. Yeah. And so they, they don't like those people out there in the United States who, don't, who think that what they're doing is sin. Yeah. And the people out here in the United States, you know, the people with what I would call consensus of Judeo-Christian values. And some of those are Orthodox and conservative Jewish people, as well as Christian people. It's not only Christians. And sometimes they're just basic moral people that say, wait a minute, don't shove this stuff <laughs> down right. my throat. Right. Um, those people have contempt for those people because they think, probably with some justification, that they're destroying our way of life, our nation, our families, our faith, whatever. So the two worlds don't talk to each other. They scream at each other. Yeah. And this book is a call for the people on both sides. And I go pretty hard on the church and I go pretty hard on the people in the industry as to their way that we've approached the other camp. And it's a call at the end for them to build trust relationships, get to know some, listen talk to each other in, gra in grace and understanding, not just lob mortar shells at each other. Which is what you've done all these years. Yeah. yeah. It's been the most fun. I've never had more fun in my life. But it's also been productive. Well, yeah, it, it has been productive. Uh, I, I have had the un unspeakable privilege, no thanks to me, I think it's just God's favor, but I've been face-to-face, -face, or members of our team have been, 90% of these stats are mine, uh, with all 10 of the top 10 most powerful people in global media, 41 of the top 50 most powerful, and over 400 of the top 1,000 most powerful. And in each of those categories, probably a third to half, they're more than just we shook their hand at a convention. They're, they're, they're a trust relationship. I sent an email to a guy who heads the second largest media company in the world, 30,000 employees. And and I got not only an email back, he offered me two times to meet, gave me a half an hour in his swanky New York uh, office complex, and we talked about spiritual things, pray with him at the end. 
And um, he knows I'm not trying to get a notch in my gun. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm yeah. not angry. Right. Uh, he's, I've known him for 10 years. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a good man, and his, and his grandfather was a minister, so I think he's clipping some coupons on the faith of his parents and grandparents. Mm -hmm. But he, know, he knows me, and he knows us, and he knows he's been prayed for for 20 years. He's been yeah. on that prayer calendar or more. And I, I think what you said, you said you've known him for 10 years. I think that's critical because a lot of times it Christians is. think, you know what, we need to go in and we need to get him saved right now. But it's a, lot, a lot of times it's like, maybe you need to get to know him, right? Maybe you well, need to, to develop a relationship here. That right now thing is a killer. Of, of, uh, that's an American sickness. Yeah. The instant everything is an American sickness. Ask folks from Asian cultures, for example. You know, I remember when we went into Vietnam, they said, we'll, we'll whip you. And they said, what do you mean you whip us? We're the most powerful military force in the world. They said, no, no, we outlasted the French 20 years. We'll ask, outlast you. And they did. Mm -hmm. And they're outlasting us in Afghanistan or whatever. So this notion that somehow this has to be fast to be good or to be godly is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I, I say it's frustrating dealing with a God for whom... A day and a thousand years are interchangeable. Yeah, well, no, 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 <laughs> I, sure. say, I want it now. And he right. says, no, no. I, I met with a billionaire, a 93-year-old Jewish billionaire i have been calling on and meeting with for 20-plus years. Hmm. I've watched him turn from an atheist to a theist. I watched him answer a prayer for healing for him. And the next time I met him, he said, your God healed my leg. And I said, he's not just my God. He's your God, too, if you embrace him. No, but your God healed my leg. Well, 20 years, and this time, I, before I met with him, I said, God, I'm tired. I'm giving up. And if nothing happens in this meeting, <laughs> I'm done. I'm out of here. And uh, the, the Holy Spirit touched him during that conversation in such a powerful mm. way that I watched God just take him apart before my very eyes. Mm. 20 years. But mm. he knows I love him, mm. and he's very wealthy, as I said. And at the end, he said, I've never given to your organization. He said, I never asked you to give to my organization. He said, well, I know, you never asked me for a thing, but I should, be, I should give some. You know, I give away millions. And I said, I know you do. So, but you've never asked me for a thing. Well, well yeah, you're that's trying to unconditional love. Because yeah, right. I'm not after his money. I'm after you know, his relationship with his God. Yeah. And uh, if, I, if that can happen, God will take yeah, care of my you're money. You're trying to give him something far more valuable than he could ever Silver give Silver and gold have I none, remember the apostles, but yeah. such yeah. as I have, I give you. Uh, if someone's watching and they're like, you know, that's cool, I'd, I'd like to have an impact on Hollywood from my I state or whatever, <laughs> how can they get involved? I know you've got Well, that, that, that prayer right. calendar you're, you're holding there, that's, that's awesome. This prayer calendar is a list of 365 most powerful people and the most influential people, like Rupert Murdoch is powerful, Britney Spears is influential, mm. but they both have their impact. And um, I have been asking 25 years now, 24, 25 years, that God would give me 100,000 people who pray every day for these people by name. And as best we can calculate it, on very conservative numbers, we're running probably 50, 60,000. Mm. But a person doesn't realize they can do something. They can scream and yell and boycott and protest. But if they start praying, two things will happen. One, it'll change their attitude toward the people. They'll still hate the stuff, the garbage, the trash right. that comes out of the industry but they'll not, not hate the people. Because mm -hmm. Jesus went real hard on religious phonies, but he didn't go hard on sinners like the woman taken in adultery because mm -hmm. he knows they're just fulfilling their job description when, they're, they, when they don't know him. Yeah. Yeah. And so having a ministry in Hollywood is something everybody can do by praying. And now then we, in this technical age, we drop the names of the two people to pray for per day, one power broker, one influencer, into your email box. Every How day. do we get that? Master Media INTL for Master Media International dot org or just Google Master Media International. There are other inter you sign Master up for that Media. list and join sign the up, prayer team. Sign up for Got a Minute or Media Minute. Mm -hmm. And every morning you can have an, an impact. You can you can have an impact uh, on Hollywood. You can have a ministry in Hollywood just like I do. Well, well maybe not just like it. But certainly we can work together on this. Yeah, and how cool to know that you're not the only one praying for this influence or, the, or this other person, the powerful person, but you're part of tens of thousands of people who are praying that day for that person. Well, Be a part of that team. Yeah, not just through our ministry. Now there, there must be 25 ministries that have risen to pray for Hollywood. Some mm -hmm. of this idea caught on. The Hollywood Prayer uh, Network yeah. with uh, Karen Covell yep. and uh, just lots of prayer. Yep. Prayer, yep. Pray Hollywood yep. and others. Very good. You can be a part of that. I got one last oddball question for you. Here's the curveball for the night. 
Paul and Jan Crouch are on that list. Yes, There's and everybody. why? And why? Because they're oh. not Hollywood. They're not. They're not movie no, no, making no. movies. No, no, no. But they're, the influence. No, they're, the people are on the list because and they're of not, influence. I mean, presumably, when, they when, know Christ, so it's not an evangelistic thing. No, no, so the, the list has no, no determination about the spiritual condition or lack thereof. Okay. There are some believers on the list, okay. but they're on there because they have an impact on the world through media. And so you can't discount the impact of TBN globally. They have a huge following and, and incredible global coverage. So we felt that they, were, they qualified by the impact of their television network to be on the list. Very good. And you can throw in Paul Jr., a friend of mine, and Matt, a friend of mine, on that list when you pray for them as well. And that was not an off-the-wall off question. It was a good question. <laughs> I, just, I didn't warn you ahead of time. <laughs> Thanks again for being here. Do check out the website, mastermediaintl.org, uh, and join the list, and, and check out Larry's book, Chasm. Check him out when he's on Life Today. Talk more about this. That's lifetoday.org. Thanks again. We'd love to have you praying with us.